Hello and welcome back and let's return to the subject of Plex, but not just Plex, 4K Plex. And today we're going to look at two NASs that you can buy right now that are well under a grand, somewhere in the region of five to six to seven hundred nicker, depending on where you're buying around, and to see which one is better suited for you for your Plex Media server when you want to only watch 4 Okay. Now, what we have here on the table is two 2022 generation NASs from Synology and QNAP. We've got the Synology DS1522, a 5 bay uh, disk station model that runs on an x86 64-bit processor, and we're going to be comparing it against the QNAP here, the TS464, their new flagship system, also running on a 64-bit x86 processor. However, after that, things get real different real quick. And one of the main reasons that people have been comparing these two systems, not just in Plex, but in a number of other ways, is because of the CPU choices that both brands have seemingly adopted on their systems. In the case of the DS1522, Synology switched lanes from an Intel Celeron-based processor, which they've been utilizing in numerous generations prior to this as the CPU of choice, and opted for an AMD-embedded Ryzen processor processor, the dual core R1600. A decent little processor there. It is a dual core um, four thread processor at 2.6 gigahertz clock speed and 3.1 gigahertz when burst at, and it's needed. On top of that, it arrives with eight gig of DDR4 ECC memory and optional 10 GBE on its five bays. It's not the cheapest desktop NAS out there, but it does bring a lot to the party in terms of hardware. But the one thing it doesn't have is embedded graphics or integrated graphics and that is when there is a specific component that makes up the CPU that is dedicated to the handling of graphical processes be they multimedia or otherwise and that's something a lot of Plex users are wondering about when it comes to this system and particularly when they're trying to pick which NAS is going to be best for their Plex media server and of course 4k one of the heaviest tasks in terms of multimedia right now in 2022 and the future now in the case of the TS464 it still arrives with a seller on the N5105. This is a four core, four thread processor that runs at 2.0 gigahertz that can be burst up to 2.9 gigahertz when needed. It's also got embedded graphics on board there, which goes up to 800 megahertz on that graphical component there. Now, this is very, very important because that means when it comes to certain more demanding tasks, this may have the edge. And by that, what I mean is although both of these do play 1080p media when it comes to 4k media the road isn't quite so smooth the reason being that 4k is a hefty beast and it also arrives in some very complex both video and audio formats now when it comes to native playback of things like h.264 and standard 4k both of these will do very very well but it, the minute the system requires more complex tasks and that includes transcoding but of course the uh, conversion of files such as HEVC where there can be licensing issues with intended destination devices or limited bandwidth access from connected clients that is where that CPU is going to be pushed and in today's video we're going to run 10 individual tests of domestic over-the-counter format 4k medium by over-the-counter i mean if you buy media right now in 2022 it's more than likely going to arrive in one of the 10 formats that we're going to look at today these will cover um, h.264 they will cover hevc they will arrive in mp4 or mkv they will also arrive with bit rates that will range from 16 megabits per second all the way up to 60 megabits per second there also on top of that we're going to look at 4k we're going to look at ultra hd 4k we're going to look at imax and we're going to look at a range of different resolutions that are all classed as 4k so for all of these tests we're looking for two things number one will either of these NASs be able to play the file Two, how much system resources, predominantly the CPU, are they going to use playing it? Because that will give you some idea how many multiple streams you can do at any given time, or if you're going to use the NAS for multiple processes as well as Plex. So without further ado, let's crack on, go for all 10 results, and compare these two systems. 
Okay, so we begin our testing with a relatively light file, a 12 megabits per second H.264 MP4 4K file. And there's going to be no transcoder or encoding necessary here because it's running on a, as an H.264 uh, compression. It's going to be fine for both. And the reason I include this rather light 4K file test is to outline a very early difference between these two. As you can see, the green line on the CPU charts for both of them, while this file plays flawlessly, represents Plex but the red line represents the overall CPU utilization by the system. And the QNAP there has those tiny red bumps. The reason being because it is a lower powered CPU in terms of overall clock speed. It has more cores and it has a graphical component which is not being utilized in this process, by the way, because uh, it's not needed. And overall, it means the Synology there is using less power overall and because of its more efficient and higher clock speed, it can get the job done with less power. Let's move to the next test where things change up somewhat. Now this test is a 60 megabits per second file here. Sorry, a 40 megabits per second file. I misread my notes and it's an H.264 again. But it's an MKV and it's an IMAX 4K trailer for Avengers Endgame. Now, this file, once again, doesn't require encoding or transcoding. It's going to play native. However, once again, you can see there on the chart while they're playing side by side that both of them, although they have registered a small spike there on that CPU um, with the green line there where Plex is using it, the spike is fractionally higher there on the QNAP. The QNAP, although it is a quad core, once again has that lower clock speed. So it's having to use a little bit more oomph and it's not quite as efficient as that of the Ryzen. Again, this isn't a process where embedded graphics are going to be drawn from the CPU too quickly. Don't worry, that will play its part later on. But for now, both of these have played this file very well with the tiniest edge to the Synology there. Our next uh, is a uh, video of so a Wakanda Forever 4K trailer, 10-bit H.264 file running at 32 megabits per second. And now we're playing HEVC. Other, in other words, in this scenario, we are going to have to rely on server-side transcoding. The file is going to have to be edited by the system. And look at that CPU utilization there on the Synology. It has gone bananas. It's gone right the way up to 100% utilization due to its lack of that embedded or integrated graphics, whereas the QNAP there is having a lovely time of it. Yes, the CPU there is edging a little higher there, something like maybe 15% tops but it is playing this file which again is an HEVC 10 bit um, MKV file there at 4k at 32 megabits per second bit rate and again the QNAP just showing what can be done when it's needed to have that integrated graphics component again I would say the Synology failed on that last test and the QNAP succeeded the next test is a Batman trailer here this is an 8 bit H.264 32 megabits per second file um, this one, again, <clears throat> should be fine for both systems, although that increased bit rate at 32 megabits per second will play its part. They're both registering a spike, as you can see there on CPU utilization. Comparable, I would say there's probably very little difference between them there in terms of utilization. I think the Synology is using a fraction more horsepower at that early jump, but it's leveling out across the pair of them quite well. And they're both handling this 32 megabits per second bit rate H.264 file very smoothly. And regardless of which one of these you would buy, if your multimedia is um, 8 bit 32 megabits per second, you're going to be absolutely fine there during the playback of these files. Um, things are going to get a little bit more aggressive later on in the video, but for now, let's move to the next test. Next, we have the trailer for Rise of the Skywalker. Terrible film, but it is uh, an 8-bit, 32 megabits per second, H.264 file there. So again, not too much difficulty, whereas the previous file was an MP4. This is an MKV file there, and this is a 4K standard trailer there, with these running side by side. Um, you may notice a drop in the frame rate while you've got this here on screen. Don't worry, that's nothing to do with the NAS. Uh, the trailer I was utilizing, I found out post-production there were issues with this particular video file so don't worry too much about that slight jump 
during the playback you're seeing but again we're seeing the familiar small jumps from both CPUs, but neither one of them particularly significant. I think the QNAP is handling this file better of the two, but only marginally between them. So again, this is another area where that integrated graphics isn't really stretching its muscles. Both of them have got make my CPU hurt and pa um, Plex pass, but neither of them really make use of it here with native playback. Next up, we've got the trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home, another H.264 file. Don't worry, there is still HEVC to come. This is an 8-bit, 32 megabits per second file. Very comparable to the most recent test we did before, but a heavier weight. Also, with a heftier audio track. I wanted to include some heftier audio tracks just to show that that can play its part on how these eventually do play. Again, very similar playback between these two, regardless of the differences between one CPU having embedded graphics and the other one not. Uh, the spike was fractionally higher, even tiny bit higher there on the QNAP, but so small it doesn't really have a tremendous impact there. They're both playing the file, both doing it very, very well. And again, I think a lot of people, myself included, would have gone into this comparison thinking that that Celeron CPU would have absolutely floored the rides on R1600 there but the truth of the pudding is in at 4k we're seeing very comparable results there and definitely a win for the 1522 the QNAP's winning as well but the Synology more surprisingly the next trailer is Dune it's a UHD 4k HEVC 10 bit 16 bit uh, 16 megabits per second bit rate file and again, you heard those four letters, H-E-V-C, and I think we both know how this is going to go. Look at the chart there on the Synology there at the top left, immediately hitting 100% very, very quickly, and the file playing very smoothly there on the QNAP with a very small spike there. There was even a big old delay there as the Synology had to get its act together to play back this file. Now, this can be avoided, of course. I'm sure a number of you will highlight this. You can use client-side encoding and transcoding. Hopefully have a hardware player that can take care of HEVC and not rely or need the transcode. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't have that or they have limited bit rates. And sometimes when it comes to 4K, conversion and transcoding is just plain necessary. So in this test, I'm going to call the Synology a fail and the QNAP a solid pass. Um, our next test here, Wonder Woman 1984, another um, H.264 file that's a 16 megabits per second 8-bit file. And again, no difficulties I can envision happening here. Um, don't worry too much about when you're seeing that large initial spike on the CPU for the Synology there. That is just previous testing for other files. You can ignore that. We are looking at the now uh, and the most recent CPU usage and utilization there. But for both of these, running absolutely fine. Nearly identical spikes there happening on the CPU for both of them, regardless of the dual core versus quad core and non integrated versus integrated CPU architecture. They're both playing this file, and I would comfortably and happily recommend this processor to playback files of this caliber on either one of these systems and the CPU architecture there. I mean, Right now, I think we've proven beyond a significant doubt that H.264 is going to run well on both of these, but there's still the question of 265 to address here on both of these NASes. And we're up for our second to last test. Uh, this is H. an H.265 file, 29 megabits per second. And again, uh, this is 8-bit HEVC as well. This is called Beauty of Taiwan. I bloody love this file. It just makes me miss the country. But again just looking at it we're seeing that cpu utilization go nuts there on the synology because of that necessity of conversion again if you have a hardware player that can transcode or take care of encoding or has a license for hevc you're not going to need to worry but a lot of uh, multimedia devices out there in the world do not have it including consoles as well to get the hevc license so right now, unless you have client-side transcoding or client-side HEVC uh, support, this what you're seeing from the Synology here is what you're going to encounter with HEVC files. Whereas the QNAP there doing a banging job with that hardware transcoding engine on board to get the job done. And we'll move on to our last test here, which is one of the heaviest uh, files we've got in bitrate. This is a 60 megabits per second HEVC 8-bit 4K Ultra HD file called Roast Duck. Um, 
Now, this file is fluid and smooth as silk, but when it comes to playback on these, we're already seeing the Synology just smash into the 100% mark to not be able to get the job done. We're already seeing it real lag behind in terms of playback, even though they were played at exactly the same time. And although we're seeing that brief initial spike there on the QNAP, it has got its gear together, taking care of the buffering, and it's getting the job done. It has played with the conversion on that Synology there, but that CPU utilization is extraordinarily high. And if you're running other DSM services on the Synology, you're not going to be able to take advantage of conversion. And therefore, again, the limitations of uh, server-side HEVC playback become problematic. Let's summarize all of the comparisons today. Everything we spotted, what did we like, what did we didn't like, and overall, which one you should go for. So immediately, we can see that all of the files we played today played on both of these NASs. We can't deny, we can't say that either one of them didn't play it and one of them did. They both played all of today's files. But it was about what was used in each of the individual systems and how well they played. And I think we can immediately say that the QNAP, thanks to that embedded graphics, it was able to take advantage of that hardware transcoding and very rarely left higher than about 15 to maybe 20% CPU utilization through all of our 4K tests. Now the Synology native playback with no issues of conversion or HEVC support did play all of the files and in some cases better than that quad core QNAP. But again, if you're going to go for the 1522 plus, you're gonna need either a device or a client device that has HEVC license support or um, has that uh, compression supported or is going to be powerful enough to take care of client side transcoding. Ultimately between the two of them the more affordable option the six, uh, the 464 from QNAP was the better value choice there but when it, if you've already got a high-end dense setup both of these will work very well for you as a 4k plex media server of domestic over-the-counter 4k. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We're going to be comparing more NASes because both of these CPUs have become tremendously prevalent throughout the world of data storage right now. Certainly the big NAS brand. So stay tuned for other comparisons. Uh, click subscribe if you want to learn more. Like if you've enjoyed the video so I know what I'm doing right and doing wrong on the channel. Take advantage of the links in the description to other guides on these NASes and others as well as where to buy these devices. And take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares and ask NAS as compares to the community forum. Other than that, I will see you next time.